Uh, all black and Latino groups have been, have been and are currently infiltrated by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI. It's to the point that society doesn't take serious many of the or all of the groups. We are aware of what the FBI has done historically and are doing today. They, under J. Edgar Hoover, they set up something called uh, COINTELPRO, Counterintelligence Program. More recently, they set up the executive order of 12333, which is an order to record all information on the internet, all information through uh, emails and phone conversations. I want to open up with Luke chapter 20 and verse 20. The book of Luke chapter 20, verse 20. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men, that they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. Now, watch this. I just thought about something that just popped into my mind. Deacon Ithan sent this to me a week ago, and I want to share it with you. Give me Acts 20. Acts chapter 20. Okay. Blow it a bit. I want you all to see this. This is all put out by the Southern Poverty Law Center as well as the LGBT community. They're working in conjunction one with the other. Activist jobs to help stop LGBT bullying, fight hate groups. Remember the L SPLC, they labeled us, although erroneously, as a hate group. Teach tolerant, tolerant seek justice. Full time and career opportunities earn $10 to $14 an hour. So, what I want you to see is that this is a striving to stop Israel. That's what it is. They want to stop this truth by any means necessary. And their eyes are on the servants of the Most High God. That's what I want you all to understand. Give me Acts chapter 20. Let's start at verse 27. Book of Acts chapter 20, verse 27. For I have not shunned to declare unto Wait, you... Wait, go back to the picture. Bring the picture back. And this is why... Don't be surprised if the person sitting next to you is part of this. What's going on at the camps? They want, they're walking around the camps, and they're videotaping you, waiting for some of this. That's why you camp leaders. Don't have a dummy with you teaching. And when I say a dummy, I'm talking about a dumb brother who just wants to make a name for himself by screaming unbiblical references. Understand that. So what they'll do, they're going up to the camp. So how do you feel about the LGBT community? And they get you all on tape. They wait to see what you're going to say. So do you think gay people should be killed? Things like that. And they're waiting for the dumbest Negro or Latino to say something stupid and go, got him. They're not interested in the individual. They're interested in the entire movement, the entire organ. Do you mean understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So you camp leaders online, don't take all dummies down. Have all dummies come back to class, sit down, and learn. This truth is bigger than your rantings and ravings. For, real quick, give me 1 Corinthians 6. Let me show you, brother, something. Y'all know this, but I want to show you something. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, please. So this is why we have to go through Camp 101. We got to make sure you brothers know what to teach and how to teach. You got to also. First Corinthians chapter six verse nine. Come on. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers. No extortionist shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, we just read a whole list of sins that will keep you from the kingdom of God. Is that right or wrong? Okay. Now, the unlearned brother, or I'll say brother, he'll read all of that and 
concentrate on abusers of themselves, where mankind, that's the homosexual part right there, or effeminate, and make that the, the foundation that that's the only sin that will keep you from the kingdom of God. And that's not true. It gave a whole list, including, let me see, covetous. That's one that a lot of people deal and battle with, but very people talk about it. It also mentioned, let me see, drunkards, look at that, drunkards. Look at this other one, revilers, extortioners, thieves. Some of you, we know some of y'all up in here are thieves. Some of you online are thieves too. But there's a list. My point is there's a list of things that will keep you from the kingdom. An ignorant brother will just stop and make as if only the homosexual cannot get the kingdom. That, and that is not true. Yet the homosexual can't get the kingdom, but that's not the only sin that God addresses. That, you understand what I'm saying? So what the LGP, the LGP, whatever they are, they want to focus on their sexuality. We're not dealing with your sexual confusion, all right? They want to focus on, get you on tape, and then your face don't matter. They look at the garment, the name on the shirt, and go, okay, this is what we're going to do. We have to think like soldiers of the Most High God. That's what I want you men, elevate your thinking, be aware of your surroundings, be conscious of your speech. Exactly. Give me Acts 20 and 27. Acts 20 and 27. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So just as Paul has done, so do we do. We don't shun to share with you, brothers and sisters, all the counsel of God, meaning the entire Bible. Go ahead. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers. So whether or not you are a soldier, an officer, captain, deacon, or bishop, you are overseers. Okay. Go ahead. To feed the church of God. So our job is to feed the church of God, which is the Israelites. Go ahead. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. Because Christ only died for the nation of Israel. Read. For I know this, that after my departing, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So just as Paul knew, so do we know today. That grievous wolves enter the congregation, and by grievous wolves, it's making reference to heretics. Brothers and or sisters who come in with doctrines and secretly sow those, tr those trains of thought into the minds of weak brothers and weak sisters. Go ahead. Also of your own selves. So now Paul comes back. He says, be conscious of the overseers, of the soldiers, the officers, the captains, the deacons, the bishops. That's the also of your own selves. Go ahead. Shall men arise. Shall men arise. Speaking perverse things. Speaking perverse things. Go ahead. To draw away disciples after them. That's what they bring up a doctrine. Then they say, I'm leaving. I'm out. Then they start to make phone calls. Hey, come with me. Come with me. And we've seen that already. But I know it has not ended yet. It's still going to transpire. What verse was that? That was verse 30. Go ahead. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So the word of the Most High, his grace, is meant to build us up. Build us up emotionally, build us up spiritually, psychologically. That's what the Bible is meant to do, build us up. So, based upon what Paul said and the warnings that he gave the Israelite churches which were scattered, this proves that all nations are set against the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel. Everybody is against this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians is, um, 4 and 9. 9 and 4 about the apostles last. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody find it. 4 and 9. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 9. Uh -huh. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last. So he set forth us, the apostles last. Because remember, during the time of Christ and the apostles, how many, who can name some of the groups that were out there during this time period? Anybody? 
Ezekiel, let me hear you. You had the Zealots. You had the Zealots. You that was the, a uh, revolutionary group that was against Rome to fight the Romans. The Stoics. You had the Stoics. That was one of those groups that uh, forbid sexuality. Uh, you had the Epicureans. Yeah, that, that group felt whatever you felt to do, you could do it. If it felt good, do it. Go ahead. Uh, those are the three. Those are the three I can come up with. You, you forgot about the scribes and Pharisees. The scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> See, you got a short term memory too. You scribes, Pharisees, <laughs> scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, the lawyers, Herodians, the Herodians. Yes. Right. So you had many groups. Just as it was in the past, so is it today. That's what I want you all to be aware of. Today you got the conscious community. And under the conscious community, I may just use that generically, but under that falls Kemet, the Egyptologists, the Moorish science. What's their name? Moorish science? What? Whatever their name is. Nation of Islam, Nuwabians. Give me some more names they got out there. Rastafarians. That... that that's the same as the Nuwabians. Pan-Africans, 5%. Is, I, they still around? I thought them dudes died off. But the Most High has brought forth this truth last. That's what he's doing. Okay. The um, society could care less. All those groups, I'm going to tell you right now. Listen to what I'm about to say. The groups that we just mentioned, today society could care less. There was a time when the FBI was against black Christians under uh, SNCC, uh, SCL, Southern Christian, okay. Student Nonviolent Coordinating I'm talking about Martin Luther King's group, his group. Oh, I forgot their name. Okay. Yeah. SCLC, SCLC, that was it. That was it. They were against them because that was the, one of the largest groups. Prior to them, you had Marcus Garvey. Okay, the Garveyites, they were against them because at those times, those were the greatest movements. During the 60s, you also had Nation of Islam. Okay, they're against that. Uh, and more recent, also the Black Panthers, which were today, um, in its past, they were called Zealots. But today, the Israelites have been growing at a steady pace, unending, and has been going on since before, just before the 60s. It has been growing and growing. Now all eyes are on Israel. They know that the conscious community, they do, argue with each other about useless information. <laughs> useless. That's what, and when I say useless, I'm, I'm not stuttering. The conscious community argues with each other about useless information. Give me a Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then I heard a dude talk about the real black man's religion is voodoo. I'm like, we just got the hell away from witchcraft. Now a Negro trying to bring us back to it. Here's a spell, teaching spells and something. Like, come on. And how come them spells don't work on white folks? They only affect black people and Latin people. It only works on us. Useless information. The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You see that? You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Because we're Israelites, this is where all the hate, because many of the leading scholars of society understand that the road to Islam is death. The road to the Nuwabians is death. It's leading us nowhere. But Israel, they said they, they follow that road. They're going to get the kingdom. Messiah will return and destroy us. Right, and they, and they understand that they will be in slavery. This is what the nations want to prevent. So, society could care less about the comedic or conscious community, pan-African. How off, how, let me ask y'all something, watch this. I don't know, I'm going to get some of y'all mad, but I don't mean we love our people. I want to stress that we do love our brothers and our sisters. But how much can you talk about ADHD? How long can you talk about that? Me, my son have an ADHD. Okay, you help him with ADHD. Okay, that's not, that's not getting us the kingdom. That's not going to show me events to come. That's not going to help me overcome my own sins within. You understand what I'm saying? You, these brothers and these, con, they, they all got their, their, their shtick. What did he say? It's a sermon, he said. Say it again. The conscious community is a church. 
Everyone has a sermon to tell. It's all, everyone has a story or a testimony. It's the same thing. They just sell it to you and put it in books. Listen, and you sisters, I got to get on you just for a second, just for a second. When you hear a brother say the black woman is God, y'all better run. I'm telling you. That's game. He running game on you. What is the easiest way to get into a black woman's panties? Flatter her big black behind. And she'll give it to you. I got it. Tell her she's God. Sister, you God. Who, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> Here's the next thing. All these single women got kids, right? They ain't got no man at home. Come up with something. Because the women like when you, you like their kids. You can help them with their children. Deal with their kids. They're going to give you some. Really? Sister, let me help you with your child. I say you need help. Your son got, suffers from ADHD. My son? Yeah, your son. You going to help me, my son? I'm going to help you with your son. Really? Really? Now give me the draws. Here, that's what they do. It's a game. It's a gimmick. It's a hustle. When you come in this truth, your goal should not be the one. I could care less about the woman's panties. I'm going to tell you, you a black devil with a big behind. I don't, if you don't like it, goodbye. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. You women going to get right. You brothers going to get right. We all going to get right together because we all a bunch of wicked people. Not I was going to drop some other words, but I can't say them things. Exactly. Everybody worries and fears about the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel. And when I say everyone, I'm talking about the nations. They fear the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel. Because, it, because it's the only gathering, according to prophecy, in the scriptures. I'm going to take you through the prophecies about Israel gathering. Let's open up with Malachi. I'm going to take you from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And remember, the Bible is over 3,000 years old. So don't think we wrote this last week. The prophecies that I'm going to show you, we're living today. This is why the white man and the nation of fear. Negroes is the one ignorant to it. They'll read it. No, let me say something about this. Another thing. No, I'll tell y'all later. Remind me about um, the original man. Just remind, Somebody remind me about the original man. Just remind me about that. Give me that. Malachi chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. Listen good to the prophecies. The book of Malachi chapter 4, verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Well, I'm going to talk about the original man now. I'll just say, because I know y'all might forget and I might forget. What the conscious community does to avoid admitting that they're Israelites, because none of them can come against Deuteronomy 28. They hear it, they acknowledge it, but then they say, well, brother, we are all things. We are the original of all things. You know why they do that? Who knows why they do that, to say we're everything and won't just admit that we're Israelites? Anybody got a clue? One brother in the back. If you've been to church, you should know. <laughs> uh, shalom, Bishop. Shalom. shalom. Brother Azariah, they say that because they try to avoid to keeping the law if they acknowledge that they're Israelites. That's it right there. Once you acknowledge you're an Israelite, that means... We went into slavery for breaking God's commandments. That means we must keep the commandments through Christ to get out of captivity. They don't want that. So the scapegoat is, well, my brother, we're all things. We are the original of all things. We are Nuwabians. We are Moorish. We are this. We are that. All of that is to downplay keeping God's commandments because we don't want to keep that. This, this, that shows you that this, this same stupid movement is the same thing that they do in church because... You ask the same question in church, and they'll say, I'm a Gentile. All God's, children. All God's children. It's the same thing. I am not, in other words, I am not restricted to, to, to the discipline of being an Israelite. Exactly. Exactly. 100% right. We don't. We don't. Re Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So here's the prophecy. The Lord said, I will send you Elijah before destruction comes. Go ahead. That's what he's saying. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. The heart of our fathers is the Bible. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Solomon, Elijah. Okay. 
Isaiah, Jeremiah, those, these are our fathers. He said, I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. We are the children. Read. And the heart of the children. We are the children. And the heart of the children, meaning the minds of the children. To their fathers. You are the Israelites. Your fathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Your fathers are Solomon, Christ, Paul. Read. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Was that it? Yes, sir. Give me Matthew 17, 11. New Testament. Matthew started, started 10. Chapter 17, verse 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? Why does the scribe Malachi prophesy that Elijah must first come? Read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Notice what he says. He acknowledges the prophecy. He says, Elijah truly shall. Look at the, it shall, past tense or future. Future. Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. Restore all things like what? The law of Moses that we learned in Horeb. And we are the Israelites. That's what Malachi was prophesying. Read. But I say unto you that Elias has come already. But let me hit y'all with something. Elijah came already. Go ahead. That's what Christ is saying. And they knew him not. And you Israelites, y'all didn't realize it was him. Go ahead. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Done un you did unto him whatsoever you listed. Go ahead. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Read. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Then it was revealed, they understood in the spirit, that John the Baptist was Elijah at that time. So, although he came then, was that the great and dreadful day of the Lord, brothers? No, that's why Christ says, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. These are the great and dreadful day of the Lord that's approaching now. Now from there, give me Amos chapter 9. Verse 11 and 12. The book of Amos chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Do y'all hear the prophecy? The Lord will raise up the tabernacle of David which is fallen. The tabernacle of David is the 12 tribes of Israel. This is what's happening now. Read it again. And that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And bring the tribes together again. Go ahead. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. Do you hear the prophecy? And I will build it as in the days of old. Come on. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That's why Edom is the first ones to say, stop that group right there. Because what they're doing is according to prophecy. We have to stop the prophecies. Read. And, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen. Which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. So all the heathen which are called by thy name, they're calling themselves what? Jews and Christians. Write that down. That's what it means. Meaning anointed. Remember the word Christian means anointed. They're saying that they are the anointed when they're not. The Israelites are the only anointed. The Israelites are the Jews of the Bible. Okay? So that's what he means that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Now, let's see if that changed in the New Testament. Give me Acts 15, verse 16 and 17. This is when Cornelius had just received the Holy Spirit. Peter didn't want to go to Cornelius. The Most High said, you have to go to him. You have to teach him because I have chosen him. Why? Because Cornelius was of the northern kingdom of Israel. That's what it meant by closing up the breaches thereof. Read that. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. So now that James is going to explain the history of why the Lord chose Cornelius. Read it again. Acts chapter 15, verse 15. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. 
After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Meaning I'm going to gather the 12 tribes of Israel back together. That's what was happening in the book of Acts. That's what was happening. That was the big commotion with Cornelius. Why is the Lord dealing with those scattered ones over there? They're nothing but Gentiles. The Lord said, no, they're chosen too. Okay. This is the controversy that we're living through today. Read. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Now, verse 17, people get confused. Hold verse 17. Go back to Amos 9 and read verse 12. Now, James just used different words, but he's saying the same thing. Watch. That they, Amos 9 and 12, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Now back to Acts 15 and 17. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. Here's a question. The word, not a question. Y'all see how Amos uses the word remnant? He used the word remnant, right? The word residue is the same word. Y'all understand that? Remnant and residue is talking about the same thing. So how are that the residue of men might seek after the Lord? How is Edom going to seek after the Lord? I'm going to see who's thinking. Nobody knows how Edom is going to seek after the Lord. Read Amos 9 and 12 because I see some of y'all slow. Read Amos 9 and 12 again. No, remember, he's not saying, James is not saying nothing different. He just used different words. Read that. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. And of, Talking about slavery. Go ahead. And of all the heathen, which are called by my name. Meaning all the heathen that go by the name of the Lord, calling themselves Jews and Christians, they all going into captivity. Now go back to Acts 15 and 17. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord. How are the residue of men, let's talk about Esau, how are they going to seek after the Lord? I'm going to see what's thinking. The brother right there with the bushy hair, right in front of me. Give me your name when you stand up. Shalom, brother. What's uh, your name? Jeromeo. 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 Go ahead. I found Matthew. Nope, nope. Just tell me so I know you understand. Um, well, they're going to, like, be scared probably and, like, try nope, to. Nope, have a seat. Uh, far left. My far left. Yeah, you. Yep, you. Mm hmm. Yes. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Mordecai. They're going to pretend to be us. They're going to take our identity like they've been doing all this whole time, Stay claiming that they're the Jews trying to follow their um, laws. No. You forgot they're Amos 9 and 12. Remember, Amos 9 and 12, read it again. It's saying the same thing. I'm telling you, Peter, James just used different words. Amos, Amos 9 and 12, mm -hmm. that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name. Now, is that talking about now or in the kingdom? Brothers, that's in the kingdom. Go to Acts 15, 17. Saying the same thing. He just used different words. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called say of the Lord. Let me help y'all out here. I'm going to give you a precept. Give me Isaiah 14, 1 to 3. How are the remnant of men, the nations, going to seek after the Lord? We're going to read it right here. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. So he ain't having mercy on everybody. He's only having mercy on the Israelites. Okay? And he will yet choose us because although we wicked as hell, Christ died for us and we're trying to get our lives right. That's why he said, I will yet choose Israel. Go ahead. And, that, and set them in their own land. And the Lord's going to set us in our own land. Not the League of Nations in 1948. The Lord will do it. Come on. And the strangers shall be joined with them. This is what we wanted. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people Stop. shall... Stop. Read that part again. And the strangers. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Uh-huh. And they shall cleave 
to the house of Jacob. And they shall cleave to the house of What does that mean? Let me hear this brother with the black shirt. Yeah, right in front of you. Right there. Yeah, right. Yep, yep, yep. Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. Brother Masha. Masha? Yeah. Okay. It means um, they're going to be serving us. Yes. Gonna be our and doing what? what are, how? How? They're going to be our servant. How? Uh, they're going to be You're right. You're right. They're going to be well, building the kingdom. Yeah. And what else? What else are they going to be doing? Uh, they're going to be building the kingdom. And what else? What else are they going to be doing? They're going to be taking care of our kids. Yeah. And what else? What else? Oh, uh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear. Uh, uh, get a lie right here in the front. They're going to worship us. Okay, something else. Something else. Uh, go in the back. Go in the back. Let me hear one of them in the back. Yeah, you. Just stand up. Yeah. Give me your name. Uh, Brother Moses. Brother Moses. Uh, we're going to kill him. <laughs> How are they going to build up the kingdom when we kill him? Now, after, I'm talking about like, after they finish, after they finish building the kingdom, we're, gonna, we're just going to get rid of them. Back, back so you mean to tell them we're going to have to pass laws to keep them alive? Endangered species because this kingdom got to get built. Pass the mic back. You all right, Brother Moses, but not today. Pass the mic back. <laughs> Shalom. Shalom. They're going to be forced to follow the laws of God. That's what I wanted to hear right there. They're going to be forced. Have y'all forgot? Give me the precept for Ze uh, Zechariah 14. They're going to be forced to do the laws of God that we teach them. If you, let's say the Lord says to you, be the, oh, wait, 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 no, give Zechariah first. I'm going to go all over the place in a second, but watch this. Zechariah 14, you know what I want, right? Egypt. Zechariah 14 and verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up at, of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them, shall be no rain. I see that? Shall be no rain. Go ahead. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherein the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So all your servants will seek the Lord. Everybody understand that? They're going to seek the Lord through you because it's going to be our job to do what, brothers? Teach them. Teach them. Give me Ruth. Um, Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1 is the precept for Isaiah 14 also. Ruth 1... Somebody find Ruth for me because you know I can't find it. Thank you. Read that. What verse, Bishop? 14. Or oh, 14. Ruth 1 and 14. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. Go ahead. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Right, this is the Lord of strangers. So when we go back to Isaiah 14, the reason I wanted Ruth chapter 1, because it used the word clave. And Ruth clave unto her. Clave and cleave is the same word. Go back to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and 1. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Right. When it says they shall cleave to us, the same thing Ruth did with Naomi. Okay. Your, your people is my people. Your God is my God. We're going to teach them God's laws the way it was always meant to be, and we're going to have them in subjection. The only nation that's going to be totally annihilated is who, brothers? Esau. Esau. And, but that's after a thousand years. They, too, going to have to learn. So now back to Amos 9 and 12. Amos 9 and 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Now Acts 15, 17. 
Acts 15, 17, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, say of the Lord, who doeth all these things. So all that's going into the kingdom, how we're going to make the nations serve the Lord. Give me Luke 19. Everybody understand that? Okay, give me Luke 19. Uh, I'm guessing verse 10 when it says, be thou Lord over 10 cities, that one. Luke 19, I'm guessing, I might have the wrong verse. It's like verse 17, 17. look around there. Yep, I got it. Luke 19, verse seven, six, 17. Okay. And he said unto him, Well, thou, good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. So you got to imagine, it's New York is one city. Imagine you being over ten New York cities. It would be your job as one of the 144,000 to make sure all the people under your jurisdiction keep the commandments of God. A, they got to learn them, and they got to keep them. You are going to have to have, not only, not only will you have to teach them, you have to set up officers, judges, to make sure that the people that you're over, let's say it's China, you got to make sure them little rug rats, washboard people do not eat snake again. You will not eat another frog. You will not eat another dog. Or a cat. We, you have to do a whole lot of killing first to make an example. And say, y'all see what I did now? Don't do it again. <laughs> Don't you brothers want that? That just sounds like music to my ears, man. Just wake up, give orders, and go back to sleep. <laughs> see, I know some of y'all, see, y'all don't really understand. Give me that in Revelation 2 now. Christ said the same thing. Christ said the same thing. Revelation 2, is it 25? Come on. Revelation chapter 2, verse 27, 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works Stop. unto the end. He that overcometh, mean overcome your trials and tribulations. And keepeth my works, mean keep the commandments. Go ahead. Unto the end. Unto the end, mean until you die to or him. Christ return. Go ahead. To him. Will I give power over the nations? To him. This is what Luke 19 was talking about. Be thou Lord over ten cities. Saying the same thing here. To him will I give power over the nations. This, these nations going into the same Gentiles we read about in Acts uh, 15, 17, Amos 9 and 12. Go ahead. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. You know what that means? We ain't going to play with the nations either. We ain't going to be smiling in their faces trying to make them laugh. When we come on the scene, there's going to be fear, total fear, because it says we're going to be God upon the earth. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. As the vessels of a potter, shall they be broken to shivers? That's why I said we're going to make examples out of a lot of Gentile nations. A lot of them got to get put to death. A lot of the, the Chinese, Japanese, white men, just to make an example. Y'all see, see I'm not playing now, right? Go ahead. Even as I received of my father. The same honor that the Most High gave Christ. Christ said, I'm going to give it to you if you overcome and keep my works until the end. Go ahead. And I will give him the morning star. Right. That's that total power, that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Okay. From there, from there, let's go to uh, Hosea chapter 1. This is why we got to be in it to win it. <laughs> like, and, and this is the ultimate lotto. Okay. I'm a, I want you to understand this thing. So you brothers that insist that I fall out this truth, shame on you. Shalom, goodbye. I ain't got time to cry for you. Read that, Hosea 1, 10, 11. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. So what I'm showing you all, in case we forgot the thought, is that the white man understands certain prophecies. He knows the prophecies are about the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel in these last days. He's not worried about Kemet. He's not worried about the conscious community. He's not worried about the nation of Islam. He's not worried about Nuwabians. He's worried about these prophecies coming to pass. Read that. Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. That's why that census thing is a joke. The census is primarily focused on numbering the 12 tribes of Israel. Where do you live? How many people live in this home? 
That's what they want to number us, but they cannot number us. That's why, don't be worried about the Chinese. A billion Chinese. That ain't nothing. The Most High said the Israelites outnumber all. Read it again in case you didn't understand that. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. You see that? That's, and that's why I get annoyed with you brothers and sisters that got hang-ups. I might be the white man. The Bible says we outnumber everybody. Chances are 10 to 1, you are Israel. So what you got a mental hang-up for? Shake your spirit. Look, I'm light skin. Oh, so what? I got green eyes. Oh, so what? Read that again. And, and yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. That's here in America. They changed our identities. Good. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. That's how Malachi 4 came to pass. It started here in America. And a seed started to grow. Started to grow. You're not African Americans. You're Israelites. You're not Haitians. You're Israelites. You're not Jamaicans. You're Israelites. It starts to grow. You're not Puerto Ricans. You're Israelites. Go. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. You see that? The gathering together is Israel and Judah. It's not talking about the Kemetic community. It's not talking about Nation of Islam. And it sure as hell ain't talking about Muhammad. Okay? It ain't talking about the Nuwabians. The prophecy is talking about Judah and Israel shall gather together. Go ahead. And appoint themselves one head. One head is Christ, the King of kings, Lord of lords. Go ahead. And they shall come up out of the land. That's the rapture the churches always talk about. Come up out of the land means being saved from the destruction. The ones coming up out of the land is Judah and Israel. If you ain't coming on the, that boat right there, you ain't coming. The Lord ain't looking for Baptists. He ain't looking for Pentecostals. He ain't looking for Roman Catholics. He's looking for Judah and Israel. That's where the angels are being set forth together. Exactly. Give me Romans 9, 25. Went to the Old Testament. Now we're going to the New Testament. Saying the same thing. Romans 9, 25. The book of Romans chapter 9, verse 25. As he saith also in... O.C. O.C. is Hosea. O.C. is the Greek word for saying Hosea. I will call them my people, which were not my people. Right, because we were called Gentile names. I will call them my people, which were not my people. Go ahead. And her beloved, which was not beloved. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. So the New Testament is saying the same thing as the prophetic prophecies. Okay, from there. Give me Isaiah 49 and 6. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 6. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant. To raise up the tw the tribes of Jacob uh -huh. and to restore the preserved of Israel. Uh -huh. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. This light to the Gentiles, that's still talking about Israel. Okay, because the Gentiles, I'm going to show you that. Remember, we were called by Gentile names. African American is a Gentile name. Haitian is a Gentile name. Puerto Rican is a Gentile name. Go ahead. That thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Here's the proof. Give me Matthew 4, verse 14 to 16. To show you that it's talking about Israel, about the light that came to the Gentiles. Matthew chapter 4, verse 14. That is, excuse me, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias the prophet Esaias saying. Esaias the prophet is Isaiah. Go ahead. The land of Zebulon. The land of Zebulon. And the land of Naphtali. That's Naphtali. By the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Y'all see that? What they're calling Zebulon and Naphtali? Gentiles. This is why when you read the word Gentiles, let me show y'all something. Give me first... Ezra 869, I think, I'm guessing, about the Gentiles, the real Gentiles. 
Is that it? I'm guessing. First Esther chapter 8, verse 69. The nation of Israel, the princes, the priests and Levites, have not put away from them the strange people of the land, nor the pollutions of the Gentiles, to wit, of the Canaanites, Hittites. So he's, he's naming the Gentiles. Read slow. To wit. Of the, the Canaanites. Of the Canaanites. That's Hitt Gentiles. Read, stay with me. Stop rushing ahead of me. Read it the whole verse again. The nation of Israel, the princes, the priests, and Levites have not put away from them the strange people of the land, nor the pollutions of the Gentiles. See that? Nor the pollutions of the Gentiles. Now he's going to name some Gentile nations. Go ahead. To wit of the Canaanites. Canaanites. Hittites. Hittites. Pharisites. Pharisites. Jebusites. Jebusites. And the Moabites. And Moabites. Egyptians. Egyptians. And Edomites. And Edomites. So those are real Gentiles. So now, when we go back to Matthew 4, this is why the churches always get confused. They have not been taught to make a distinction in the term Gentiles. Sometimes the word Gentile is making reference to the actual nations. Sometimes the word Gentiles is making reference to Israelites. Matthew 4, read that again. Matthew 4, verse 15. The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Read. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. So the Gentiles that sat in great darkness, like the other verse we read, was making reference to the northern kingdom, Zebulon and Naphtali. Go ahead. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, Light is sprung up. That's salvation. Anytime salvation is used in conjunction with the word Gentiles, know that that's Israelites. Everybody understand that? When you read about death, damnation, or destruction, referring to Gentiles, you know that's the other nations. You got to learn to understand. Okay, balance it out. Get the proper understanding. Okay? Right. Now, you heard what the bishop said, right? He was saying that in Christianity, they've confused what the word Gentiles mean. Y'all all right? That's what they've done. Anybody that goes to church, the word Gentiles, nobody really knows what it means. But it goes back to the point of what I said before. They've given the people in the church basically some kind of Kool-Aid called Christianity. But in the real background, they know what these words really mean. Right. What's the proof? They have it written in their Bible dictionaries that the word Gentiles sometimes, it says usually it is a non-Israelite nation. Right, let's so, get that. Let's read that. So we that's read the it. proof that the scholars know, but they, they teach the people in the church stupidity. Somebody get a Bible dictionary. Get the Zondervan's Bible dictionary where they show you that. Showing you that Esau knows. The only ones who don't know. The people in the church. The people, the blacks, Latinos, we that fill a church are ignorant as hell. Now, the, now the, what's, what's amazing that the people that write these scholars also are connected with the theologian schools that teach you people in the church. Right. So how is it that they did not teach the people this understanding here? Because it's their purpose to keep you stupid. Exactly. That's the point. I'm going to just be flat out plain. You got it? Gentiles. Zondervan Bible Dictionary, page 195. Listen. Gentiles. Nation, people. That's what it means, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Usually. Hold it. Usually mean it's not always. Usually it means a non-Israelite people. So according to what it's saying there, that means there are cases when the word Gentiles is actually talking about Israelites. They're just telling you that flat out in a scholarly book. But yet the scholars that, be, that, that set up the preachers and all of that, the people in the church, you all talking about Gentiles is all nations. And when you read in parts of the Bible where it's making reference that the Gentiles are the Israelites, everybody's lost. Exactly, exactly. Get up. Uh, well, you got some? Yeah. yeah. Same book. Go to Heathens real quick. Heathens in the same book. It says the same thing there also. That's the reason why this white society, that's why it matters, because we, we've uncovered their lies through the most high. When you read in Paul's letters, Paul refers to heathens also. Gentiles are heathens. Read heathen. Heathen. People. Nation. Usually. Stop. They're going to word again. Usually. Go ahead. Usually used for a non israelitish people. Usually used. Right. Meaning not always. And thus has the meaning of Gentiles. Yeah, same meaning. So that's why it says usual for both. Exactly. There you go. Y'all understand that? 
of all praises. Watch this, Ezekiel 37.10. This is why the nations hate us so much. This is why Christ said that. Why? Because the light is sprung within us, and we're revealing all the mysteries of the Bible. And they don't want that. They, they'd rather us be part of comedic community. They'd rather us be pan-Africanists. They'd rather us be voodoo priests. They'd rather us be Muslim. Talking about assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam. Yeah, bologna and ham. The hell is this? Salami and cheese. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 10. Uh -huh. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. Meaning the word of God came into them. The laws of God into the, entered into them. And they lived. And they lived. And stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great army. Do y'all hear the prophecy? An exceeding great army. Read. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. So the prophecy is that the whole house of Israel, the, the ones chosen shall hear the word, learn it, and be turned into an army. That's the prophecy. This is why in the churches, you got men in the churches. Useless. Being all their lives. What army? What, where's the prophecy being fulfilled at? They just sit there and they're humming hard, committing adultery and taking money. They're not warring to gather the souls of their people back. They're not doing it. That's where the Israelites come in. That's our job. Here's the precept, New Testament, Revelation 11 and 11, saying the same thing. Revelation 11 and 11. And after three days and in half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. 350 years. After 350 years, because that's the three days and a half. Go ahead. And they stood upon their feet. So once the Spirit of God enters into us, meaning the knowledge, the understanding, it says we stood upon our feet, read. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. That fear is not because we're running around shooting anybody. That fear is not because we're, we're putting bombs in places. That fear is the people of God. Let me get myself calm now because I'm getting upset. And happy at the same time. You ever get that feeling? Anyway, the men of God, the men of God are organizing themselves with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And that is dangerous to white society. This is why they made laws about, uh, what is it, when, um, when you, too many, loitering, loitering laws. Where more than two and three are not allowed to gather together. This is why when you're in your jobs and there's more, a few of y'all together, you feel funny when the white man walk by. They always shh, 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 don't say nothing. They want to know what you're talking about. They always got that fear that you're up to something. I don't know if I could trust these niggas and specs up in here. Y'all know what the bishop's talking about. I know they know what I'm talking about. Watch, here's another one. More prophecy, Genesis 49 and 10. The book of Genesis chapter 49 and verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Read it again. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter makes reference to the king. It's all making reference to Christ. He's the king. The scepter, meaning a kingship, shall not depart from Judah. Go ahead. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Nor a priest from between his feet. What does that mean? Well, I'll ask the question. What's, brothers, what is between your feet? That's right, your rod, your penis. It's telling you that through Judah, there will be an ultimate king and ultimate priest in one. That's Christ, king of kings, lord of lords. And that's also letting you know there's no immaculate conception. That's what it's talking about shall come from between his feet, his loins. Okay? The Bible says, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So that's going right back to the scripture. Right. Read. Until Shiloh come. Until Shiloh come, meaning the peace. Shiloh means peaceable one. Go ahead. And unto him. And unto him. Shall the gathering of the people be. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. That's Christ. We're going to gather to him. That's why we read in Hosea 1 and 11, uh, one head. We shall choose one head. Now watch this. Give me Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians 2 and 1 to show you the fulfillment of that. The 
The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So don't let no brother in Harlem or Philadelphia tell you he's the one to gather the people together. The only one gathering the people is Christ. Everybody understand that? Stop listening to these hucksters out here. Everybody got a scam, okay? The gathering of the people shall be unto Christ. Okay, give me another one. Give me uh, Zephaniah 2 and 1. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. You see that? So that's the ultimatum. That's what the Lord requires of us, to gather ourselves together. Now give me um, Sirach 3611. Ecclesiasticus chapter 36, verse 11. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. So this is why I'm saying to all of you, the white man and the nations, the elites, let me word it like this so you don't think all Edomites understand because you got some dumb Edomites out there. The only ones who understand are the elites of society. They know the scriptures. That's why here's the proof. Give me Revelation 12. The one about the devil has, knows he has a short time. 12 and 12. Thank you. The book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. How does the devil know he has a short time? The scriptures. The scriptures. They have all their, all their top religious theology scholars, their job, I always tell y'all, they, they have certain people in society, their job is to study the Bible. They get paid millions of dollars to do this. That's why they have set up the World Council of Churches and the National Council of Churches. They're the ones that dictate breakdowns in scriptures, this is how all uh, religions teach John 3.16 the same way. Because of the World Council of Churches, the National Council of Churches. They say this is the open understanding. This is how you teach it. Okay? From there, give me Isaiah 41. So the devil knows he got a short time. And he knows he has a short time because Israel is gathering together. He says, when you see the Israelites, that's how we know. Time is up. Time is short. Exactly. This is why if you notice, um, I don't know how many, well, when you channel surf, you'll notice like on the Trinity Broadcast Network, what's that other one with the old white man with the big ears? <laughs> I don't know. Jack Benner, no. 700 Club. Uh, what's his name? Pat Robinson. If you notice him, the people on TBN, and they start saying things like, uh, recent recent year, uh, we got to keep the high holy days written in the Bible. You know, the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, the day of, they start to, because why? Because all their members are starting to hear Israelites. And what we're teaching, there's no way around it. So they, now they got to try to incorporate or infuse lies with the truth that we're putting out because they're being questioned by their membership. Do you all understand what the bishop is saying? These professional liars, they say, you know what, this truth about the Israelites is coming out and it's undeniable. So the best way that I can deceive the people is give them a little bit of the right. give them a little bit of what they're learning. And once I get in, then I can steer them wrong. Exactly. Get Psalm 64. Let me show you something. I'm gonna tell you about a, I'm gonna tell you a story about a rock. Psalms, I think it's 64. The one about the thought of every one of them. You know what I want? Yes, sir. Psalm 64, verse 5. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get it. Let me get it. Uh, 64. Okay. Yeah, verse 5. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. Right. The evil matter is destruction of the 12 tribes of Israel. The evil matter is change their identities, like it says in Psalms, the 83rd chapter. Right? They commune of laying snares privily. A snare is a trap. They commune, meaning they have meetings of laying traps 
Privily means secretly. Welfare is a trap. The educational system is a trap. Religion is a trap. Okay? Politics is a trap. That's what it means when it says they commune of laying snares privily. Go ahead. They say, who shall see them? They say, who's going to realize that these are traps to destroy them? Go ahead. They search out iniquities. That's what I wanted. They search out. And this is how you get Easter. This is how you get Christmas. This is how you get New Year's Eve, Mother's Day, Father's Day, because of their archaeologists. They search out iniquities. They hire people to search out iniquities. That word commune, what that word commune mean? They commune. Read that part again. They commune of laying snares privily. What does that word commune mean? Oh, I see hands. Well, come on, the microphone. Put it in somebody's hands. I ain't picking. Come on, quick. Shalom. Shalom. David. David. Right. Shalom, um, David. Yeah, they get together and they, um, they commune. 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 They get yeah. together, right? And they get together and plan. The, right. There's a conspiracy. They actually right, have a right. council. Right, right, right. They have they have a secret meeting, a council, mm -hmm. and they come so together and discuss. Commune is the root word of what? Communicate. Communicate. Right, communication. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. You got that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's how important we are, that they have to commune mm -hmm. together to conspire against us. Exactly. Read verse 6 again. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. You see that? They don't do a half... But job, you know, the A word should go there. You know how your mama say, you always do a half A job. Yeah. But the Bible says the white man accomplishes a diligent search. Go ahead. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. Y'all see that part right there? Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. Meaning they got, they think deep. They, they, they don't, let me tell you something. Blacks and Latinos, we commune for the here and now. We communicate for today. White folks, the Bible saying their thoughts are deep. They discuss things for years to come, like the making of slave, the Willie Lynch letter. I'll give an example. You got a son, you got, you get, let's say you got a little black boy. You get a little black boy. You say, hey, I want you to throw this rock in the water and tell me what you see. So a little black boy, he throws the rock and he looks and you, at the rock goes, he goes, hey, the rock splashed over there maybe about 30 certain feet. He goes, that's what you saw? Okay. He says to the white boy, hey, little white boy, throw this rock in the river over there. White boy goes, throw this rock in the water? He says, yeah. White boy watches it. He goes, Poof! and the little white boy goes like this. He says, the rock hit the water, and the ripple effect went to the north side, the east, and it came this way. His thoughts is not like our thoughts. They think ahead. For example, when you say something like Jesus Christ is black, black people and Latin people will go, so? It don't mean nothing. White people in their mind, that means I'm going into slavery <laughs> because I enslaved his people. That's how they think. They think far ahead of us. I'm going to give you another example on a secular level. When they wrote the Constitution, right? In the uh, 13th Amendment, there's a provision that allows them to take people who are convicted of crimes, quote-unquote, and make them slaves in the system. Although, quote-unquote, slavery was abolished, I tell you, Abraham Lincoln and all this freed the slave, you thinking that America was about letting us go, as, 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 as they teach in the school. They already had that all set up because they knew that this system works on slavery. The, 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 the fuel that it takes to keep America going is based on exploitation of slaves. Do y'all understand that? Their all their economy and their whole business is built off of us. Okay, so they have to keep they have to keep a system of slavery, whether it was physical chattel slavery or the prison industry. It's all was orchestrated from the very beginning. As soon as the, when they signed that paper, they knew what they were doing. That's deep thinking. Exactly. Give me um, Isaiah forty one. Wait, I'm sorry. No, no, yeah, jump to lead that. Give me Isaiah 41, 21. Isaiah 41, 21. Now watch this. Isaiah regarding, regarding all the world's religions, regarding all the conscious groups, 
regarding all the Nuwabians, regarding all the Kemites, regarding all the Moorish science professors, all the voodoo priests, all the nation of Islam, and whatever little flunky group is out there. Watch what God says. Isaiah 41, verse 21. Produce your cause. Now, I want you to understand, this is God speaking through Isaiah. He's saying to our people and the religions that they're in, produce your cause. Go ahead. Say of the Lord, bring forth your strong reasons. Bring forth your strong reasonings. Go ahead. Say of the king of Jacob. Uh-huh. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Show us prophetically what shall happen. So the challenge is this. God is saying to all these religions, all these denominations, all these little black groups, show us what shall happen in the future, in your books, in your writings. Go ahead. Let them show the former things. Show us now the former things. Why did we as a people go into slavery? Show us according to scripture or whatever books you into, why did we as a people go into slavery? That's what the challenge is God challenging these fake religions out here. Go ahead. What they be. What they be. That we may consider them. That we might consider. Oh, you're saying that Islam is the way. Well, show us things to come and show us the former things of why these things happened to us. Oh, you're saying that we are the conscious community or Kemet. Show us things to come and show us why we as a people went into slavery. I want to read it. That's the challenge. Go ahead. And know the latter end of them. So that we should know the latter end of them. Go ahead. Or declare us things for to come. Or declare unto us things to come. Go ahead. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods. So that we should know that ye are gods. Because if you're able to open your books, whether it's the Quran, the Kebron, the Gast, what's the other books? The, the Gilgamesh epics, uh, the Book of the Dead, the ISIS papers, Hieroglyphics. The, all that crap. Read that part again. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that you are gods. That we may know that you are gods. Go ahead. Yea, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Uh-huh. Behold, ye are of nothing. You see what God says? Behold, you are nothing. You are useless. You are a waste of time, a waste of life. That's what God is saying to all these religions. Go ahead. And your work of naught and your works of nothing was that it an abomination is he that chooseth you any israelite that chooses the community the, what is they called again the comedic community the conscious community pan-african now i know you're gonna get mad but it's okay you're gonna be all right uh hinduism give me some more of these foolish things our people are into buddha buddhism hinduism rastafarianism an abomination is he that chooses you christianity too uh, how could I forget that group? Wow, that's the largest group out there. An abomination is he that chooses you. Because they can't show us things that happened in the past to our people or things which are to come for our people. Like, remember the radio show that it did in Detroit with the Muslim? Mm -hmm. I said, show us in the Bible a prophecy about the black man and black woman. Here, get the Quran and show it. They're going to change the subject. Well, we ain't going to talk about that right now. That's what they do. We ain't going to talk about that right now. Because they're full of it, all of them. And we can say, because most of us in here came out of one of those factions. Some of us, more, I came out of three of them. Islam, Christianity, and uh, uh, Pan-African crap I was in. I never got into that Rasta thing. I couldn't deal with the bugs in the hair. I don't like that. I could never get with that. I don't know what Benjamin sees in that. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> a few weeks ago, I'm going to show you how dangerous this word of God is. Give me a, give me first, you know, I got to show you the power. Give me Jeremiah 5. I forgot the verse where it says fire. Y'all know what I want? 514. I got to show y'all the power. Because some of you don't understand the power that you hold in your hands. Some of you don't understand the power that you are studying. The white man knows it. That's why in that movie, Book of Eli, right. remember what the white man said? He's the other white man said, what's the importance of that book? He said, it's not a book. It's a weapon. That went over most people's heads. That went right out of the theater into the street. 
Nobody caught none of that. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. You see how powerful the word of God is? The word of God is like fire. He said, it shall burn them up. Give me the next one in um, Isaiah, what's the one? Oh, Isaiah, Jeremiah 23, 29. Jeremiah 23, 29. Jeremiah 23, verse 21, 29. 23, 29. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're going to get your sip later on, obviously. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, is not my word like as a fire? Y'all see that? The Most High said his word is like fire. Go ahead. Say of the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. You see how powerful the word of God is? That's why we don't, I, we don't take it lightly when people play with the Bible. Because there's spiritual side effects to it that you may not see with your physical eyes. But there's physical side effects to teaching this Bible. Like it says, give me that next one in Isaiah 55. Around 8 9 about the word don't go out void. That's why John the Baptist was able to teach in the wilderness and the people came to him. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11. So shall my words be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And the it shall prosper in the thing where the two I sent it. Y'all see that? So this is more than just pages, words on a book. This is spirit, okay? The Bible is power. It's like fire. It's like a hammer. I'm going to read something to back up the bishop real quick. Isaiah 13 and 3. To show you how powerful this Bible is. Because the white man, or Esau, let's call him by his right name. Esau. Esau speak the words of the Bible. The, the Most High don't move. Because the Most High's angels don't activate when they speak. The Most High is waiting for the Israelites to speak. And that's what Esau is worried about. He said, when the Israelites get hold of this Bible, we're in trouble. We're going to read the proof now. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 3. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have commanded my sanctified ones. The sanctified ones are the Israelites that have repented in Christ. Okay, when the repentant Israelites in Christ, the men take forth this Bible and teach the prophecies out of this Bible, the angels have to get busy. Because when the prophets speak, there's a prophecies that are going out. Prophecies actually happen when the angels move on the minds of men to make this thing happen. So the angels are sitting back waiting. They say, well, we're not moving if, 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 a, if an Arab say something. That Islam garbage. The angels don't move on that. Angels don't move when, when the so-called white preachers, Edomite preachers teach. The angels ain't on that. But when the Israelite preachers get hold to it, now the angels got to move. Read it again and read on. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger. So when the prophets speak, like it says in another part, it says that the, surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his service of prophets. So what he's saying there, it says, says what? Read that again. And I'm going to give it to the bishop. I have also called my mighty ones. The mighty ones are the Israelites that have repented. The angels ain't going to move on nobody else's say so because the Israelites are the ones that's got to bring it out. That's the reason why there's so much going on now. Read. For mine anger. For my anger, meaning the prophecies of destruction. Go ahead. Even them that rejoice in my highness. The angels are the ones that rejoice in the most highest highness. So the angels, when they hear us teach the Bible and bring the prophecies out, the most high says, okay, angels, you have to activate. Exactly. That's what this man is scared to death of. Right. Get Hebrews 4 and 12. This is why when you read the history, remember the Greeks was burning the Bibles. Remember that? That's what the Greek, they, they was taking all, it said whoever was found with the testament of the writings was put to death. They said we don't want them with that book because they will return to their God and the Lord will fight for them. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. 
For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Y'all see that? This is why, because the Bible's going to take effect. We didn't got time to flatter people. Tell them the truth. This is what the Bible says, okay? That way, if they're of God, they're going to get cut and be healed at the same time, okay? Read again. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So the word of God goes down into your soul, into your spirit. Right, when it's spoken. Go ahead. And of the joints and marrow, mm -hmm. and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible will reveal the intents of the heart. Okay, that, that's why we have to become expert in this. It ain't just about the white man's the devil. That's what we always tell you, brothers. The Bible's all. This is also, although this Bible is used, it can break souls, cut spirits. It's meant to heal too. Okay, it's meant to bring our people back in their right frame of mind. You got that, Liam? Will you finish? Yes, sir. So, now I'm going to show you how important this Bible is. That's why all these other religions out there, it's nothing. I just put a video up. I just put it up. This Edomite, Deacon Yawasop and Deacon Ithan did a teaching called, I think it's called The Israelites Will Not Be Debunked, I think, where you called the white man Esau by his proper name. The Edomite stopped the video. He said, stop. Now, remember, the white man already taught Esau is done away with. Right. He's, he teach the lie, Esau is done. But when you said it, right. he got so angry. He said, using that word is like using the N-word. Because he felt it. Because by him studying the Bible, he knows what, who, the es who Esau is. And by y Deacon Yawasop calling him an Edomite, an e or descendant of Esau, he knows he has no salvation. So it infuriated him. And that part of the Bible he has to get rid of. Exactly. He can't read Obadiah no more. Exactly. Now watch this. Here's another Edomite. Mad! Go ahead. A Baptist preacher. Now, if you think about it, Esau isn't really around today. You know, I mean, of course, according to the black Hebrew Israelites, it's us, you know. But anyway, the point is, you know, Edom, the civilization of Edom or the Edomites, it doesn't exist, folks. You know what I mean? That civilization is just gone. It's just become totally wiped out and just absorbed into whatever other cultures or obviously those descendants were intermingled with a lot of people. But as a nation, there's no nation we could point to today and say, this is Esau. Now, we could point to Egypt, right? And we could say, this is Egypt. We could point to even Iran and say, well, this is Persia. This is the modern Persia right here, right? We could point to other places that the Bible mentions like Syria and Damascus. And we could say, well, Damascus is a place that we could visit. Syria is a place that we could visit. There are people that would identify, I'm a Syrian. But is there anybody who would say, I'm an Edomite? I mean, can we book a flight to the land of Edom? Can we book a flight to these places? Can we meet these people? No. Why? Because they've been wiped out. They've been made bare. And they've just been assimilated into whoever the surrounding areas were. They don't, there's no nation like that anymore of the Edomites. He said, I'm, I'm, I've made him bare. I've uncovered his secret places. And he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors. Watch this. And he is not. What does it mean to is not in the Bible? It means you're gone. You don't exist. The word is there is talking about existence, right? So if I say he is not, it means he does not exist is what that means. So it's just saying he's gone. He is not. Like, like when they thought that Joseph had died, his father and, and his uh, younger brother and so forth, they said Joseph is not. He doesn't exist. He's not what? He just isn't. He doesn't exist. So it says he is not. Leave the fatherless children. I'll preserve them alive. And let thy widows trust in me. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse. And all the cities thereof shall be perpetual wastes. I've heard a rumor from the Lord. 
And an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather ye together and come against her and rise up to the battle. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen. You see, that? this isn't going to be a big, powerful, well-known nation. I'll make thee small among the heathen and despised among men. The, thy terribleness hath deceived thee and the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, thou that holdest the heights of the hill. Though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. Also Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. So we see here that Edom is going to be brought low, decimated, eventually not even exist anymore, which is where we're at today in 2017. Why? Because of their pride, they're lifted up in their heart, and they say, oh, well, I'm going to go dwell as high as an eagle's nest. And God says, well, I can bring you down from there. I can bring you down from any height. This is very similar to what he preached to the Ammonites, where he talked about the backsliding daughter. That, well, who's going to come and get me? And then Edom says, well, I'm all the way up here. Who's going to come and get me? And God is constantly saying, don't be puffed up. Don't be prideful because I can and will bring you down. We must always trust in the Lord, rely on him, and realize that he holds our fate in his hand. And not get all puffed up against the Lord and boast and glory in ourselves, our treasures, or our ethnicity. Oh, well, I'm black. I'm automatically a Hebrew Israelite, according to this cult that believes that. Or, oh, well, I'm of the Jews. My last name is Kohane or, or uh, Goldstein or Goldsmith or Goldwater or Goldbloom. So I'm automatically of the chosen. No, no, that's pride, right? Isn't that pride that would glory in your race or glory in your ethnicity or glory in your money or glory in your military? Hey, let him that glory is glory in the Lord. Hey. <laughs> well, all righty then. You got to let me have him. Go ahead. Get to, get to it quick. We ain't got all, all right. day. Give me Obadiah. Give me the first verse and the fourth verse. That's all I need. He was, he, you know how much pain it took for him to even get up there and do that? He was dying. He was feeling cuts. No, he, he, was, was he was reading Jeremiah 49, right, which know, is very right, similar, similar to Obadiah. To right, but we're going to read this. <laughs> right, his eulogy, exactly. That, somebody need to give him a, give, take him to the hospital because he's bleeding. Read. Obadiah, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God, Concerning Edom. This is what God has to say about the people called Edom. He said they ain't around no more, right? Verse 4. Verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. According to God, Edom's exalted as an eagle. That's his symbol on his dollar bills and all that. That's what he calls his symbol is an eagle. When he landed on the moon, he said the eagle has landed. He can't get out of this. Read. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Edom is not wiped out at all because they're out there. And the, literally what it's saying, uh, though thou set thy nest among the stars. That's space travel. Ain't nobody out there but Edomites. Ain't no Arabs out there. Ain't no Negroes out there. Ain't no Africans out there. There's nothing but Edomites out there in outer space. That's what it meant when it says among the stars. Now, the Bible dictionary. That last piece. You didn't read verse 18. No. Oh. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> give me this. Right. Right, because verse 18 is the killer. I'm going to read 18 after this real quick. I'm going to line them up. Edom, Bible Dictionary, page. Listen up, listen up. Now, this is the, the same man that spoke is the one that wrote this. <laughs> the Edomites wrote this. Read. Showing you, they, like I said, the scholars know what this book is really talking about. Read. Edom, page, page 142. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgment. What does the word future mean? Meaning after the time period that this was written. Okay. Edom figures prominently. Prominently meaning all over the Bible. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures. The prophetic scriptures is the Bible. As the what? As, for, excuse me, as the scene of great 
future judgments. It didn't just say future judgments. It said great future judgments. What is that talking about? Armageddon. That's why I'm saying great future judgment, meaning the great red dragon Esau fighting against Christ. That's what it's talking about. So he, he, he's in existence. He's being prepared to die when Christ come back. That's what it is. Now, bottom of 18, Obadiah. She. Oh, she, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, completely. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites that was not given any promise of mercy from God. That's what we talked about earlier. All of the other nations going to, all of the other nations going to be serving Israel. But this nation, Edom, is going to be wiped out. So that didn't happen yet. Now, Obadiah. Verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. Esau is going to be made to be burnt up. That's what he's talking about. We're going to round them all up. Go ahead. And they shall kindle in them. And we shall kindle in them. And like devour burning them. Up wood and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining. Excuse me. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord hath spoken it. So when the Lord hath spoken it, right after this, it's going to let you know that they're still here. Read. Read. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau. Read. And, the, and they of the plain, the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto the Zareth, and to the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sephard, shall possess the cities of the south. And the kingdom? And Savior shall come up. On Mount Zion. So when Edom is all burnt up, the saviors shall come up upon Mount Zion. To judge the Mount of Esau. To judge the Mount of Esau. So when Esau is judged by the saviors, meaning the Israelites. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. That's what 2nd Ezra was talking about. He said the end of Esau's world is the beginning of Jacob's. That's what that's talking about. So they still here because when the kingdom can hear, then that's when that's going to happen. Exactly. Get Isaiah. 63. This is about Christ's second coming. Watch what it says. Read from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 1. This is for those of you that might be thinking, well, maybe the Edomites are done away with. Maybe they finished. Although Deacon Yahushab just showed you in Obadiah, they're not done away with. They're going to be done away with. In the kingdom, here's some more. Verse 1. Who is this? that cometh from Edom, with dyed garments from Basra, this that is glorious in his apparel, tra traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. And let me ask this question. What is the modern name or place of location for Edom today? Anybody know? Edom. Modern, modern, in the back, in the back. The modern. Shalom. Shalom. No, I want the literal. I want. Listen, I don't want the spiritual. I want literal. Give it to him. America. Have a seat. No, I said not spiritual. Right. This is going into. This is all talking about spiritual. What we're reading, where it talks about Edom and Bosch was talking about America and the European allies. But that's not my question. The dude said, "Where can you go on a map and look for Edom?" Shalom. There's a place. Right. Tel Aviv. Huh? Tel Aviv. No. A woman? Somebody else. Give us just pick somebody. Come on. Mount Seir. Give us somebody else. I want the modern name for uh, Edom. Shalom, Bishop. Uh, Shalom. It's uh, Georgia, Russia, the Caucasus Mountains. No. Uh, come on, give it to somebody else. Just pick somebody. Give it the mic. I'm about to give it to you in a second. Petra. Thank you. I thought nobody was going to get it. Petra. That means rock. That's where Edom is on the map. It's called Petra today. They changed the name to Petra. That's what they did. Now, uh, you'll see it in the movie, uh, Transformers and one of those Indiana Jones movies. And the Last Crusade. You see it. It's Petra. That's Edom. 
Right, they go in there. But now Isaiah 63 is talking about spiritual Edom, spiritual Bozra, which is America and a European ally. So let's read it again. Read through it quick. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? So Christ is going to do so much killing. His garment's going to have blood all over it. It looks like he's trodden in the wine press, like he was stomping grapes with his feet. Go ahead. I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. Because he don't need the Israelites to help him. Go ahead. For I will tread them in mine anger. I will tread Edom in mine anger. And trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment. Go ahead. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart. And the year of my redeemed is come. So this hasn't happened yet. This is all future tense. see that? You see how the white man be lying and... Christians will look at that white man and think he's Jesus right. and go, yeah, you're right. You're right. Edom gone. Ain't no more Edomites. Y'all are simple as hell. But Stop what, listening to the <laughs> devil. But when that same Edomite get off that podium and go home, he's crying over six packs of beer. Yeah. <laughs> he's crying like hell because he, he, he know the scriptures can't be broken. So what I'm showing you again, these Christians, these leaders, they don't give a hoot about the conscious community. They don't give a hoot about Pan-Africans. They don't give a daggone about the nation of Islam, Nuwabians, uh, Egyptologists. Their focus is the nation of Israel, the real nation of Israel, us. That's what their focus is on. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.